everybody. Welcome to another episode of uh, What a Hell of a Way to Dad. It's a dad chat. Uh, we haven't had a dad chat in a while. Well, I had a dad chat with uh, uh, Max not too long ago, but I've got a new internet personality, uh, somebody who hopefully you should be listening to, uh, Brian Quinby of uh, The Guys Podcast and multiple other shows. Brian, how are you doing today? Great. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm feeling good. I'm, I dadded last night, actually. How did you How did you do that? Uh, she comes home like she, so she went away to college, but she lives like six blocks away. Like we live like right. We live on the same street <laughs> and uh, she just goes down to sleep in it. She sleeps in the dorm. She, she'll be gone for like two or three days and then she'll come back for two or three days. So, yeah, she was around last night. We went and got ice cream and, uh, you know, hung out a little bit. Does she bring her laundry back to you for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, not she does it. But yeah, she brings her laundry back. She likes to take a shower here. Like she comes home because taking a shower here is better than taking a shower at the dorm. So um, I don't know how the dorm is set up there. But as somebody who spent a long time in the army and had to deal with communal showers, 100 percent understand that. Like I am, you know, it, when I was her age and I was in the army, uh you know, I had no qualms about it, but now as, as an adult, I like my, I like my, I like the water pressure where it is. I don't even like showering in hotel rooms, you know? Me neither. I don't like using the bathroom at all anywhere except for at my house. But exactly. I have she's two- like, she's like, uh, uh, I mean, she's doing okay. They have private showers there, sure. not like each person, but you go into a, a sort of room a and, stall. Yeah. It seems like it sucks. I mean, I I was a redneck that didn't go to college, so I never had to do communal showers, which has been very good for me. But she also like, like I said, she comes home a few days a week, and like uh, I think she's having fun down there. It's hard, to, <laughs> it's hard to tell. She's a lot like me, so it's hard to tell when she's in a good mood. And that's that's something I wanted to talk because she is. She said you said she's going to be turning nineteen soon, like in yeah. in the ne- next like couple of days. days. Yeah. yeah. So um, I have an eight-year-old, and most of the people that I know uh, who have kids now at our age, uh, and and these are just people I know. I know this is not the the average or anything, but most of us have kids that are that have not gone through the teen years yet. But you have a fully grown child that is out of the house, you know, kind of like comes home and everything. But but you've reached the stage, I guess, where like you can stop not necessarily being a parent, and you can be friends with your kid. Do you kind of notice that happening? Yeah, we've been there for like a few years, though. Like, I've always kind of been that way with with my daughter as like a, a a friend. It's just that we now we can we we can sort of uh, uh, talk to each other in a in a. We've always been able to. I guess we can we can eat edibles together, and we can like <laughs> go to the movies, and we can do stuff together that we wouldn't have done before. And like she, you know, I can tell her. I mean, I was always pretty honest with her about sure. my life, but like, uh, yeah, I hired her. She works for me now. So like, uh, because she needs money because, you know, she's because in college. Because we live in a capitalist hellhole. Sure. Yeah. So I gave her, I give her $500 a month to look for uh Facebook stuff for my show. So it's, uh, you know. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, and I remember earlier, like years ago, during pro- possibly a Street Fight episode, you guys did so much content uh, back back then. You're putting out like three shows a week, and I, I was not able to keep up with that. But well, um, brother, I was barely the the reason my show is what it is now is because I was unable to keep up. Yeah, with that. It, <laughs> it is exhausting. It is. It's a, and like I've got a I've got a regular like full time job that I have to like I'm thankfully I'm on lunch break now so I can I can take that kind of time off but it is it is kind of grueling like I I hate to like tell people like you don't understand like how hard podcasting is but like it, it is it can be uh, especially when you're trying to do it correctly and stay on a schedule of some kind because that's how if you want to make money like you do because you've been doing this for years at this point. This is your job. Uh, and I have to commend you on finding a way to make money off of surfing Reddit. That is that is phenomenal. <laughs> well, I mean, it is the weeks where I'm recording guys are kind of grueling, but the way it's done is two a week for three weeks and then three weeks off and then two a week for three weeks because it is these shows are hard to prep. 
because I do use Reddit a decent amount, but there are some things that aren't on Reddit and I have to go out and find guys. You know what I mean? Like I have to find out where the guys congregate, where the weirdest guys congregate and stuff like that. So like it, like the weeks that it's happening, I'm like, God damn. And you know, you're, you're scheduling guests and we don't have like a hard record time for this show. Like we did the, uh, like, like me and Chris just record. We decide when we're going to record at the beginning of the week and do it. You know what I mean? So does Chris uh, also have that flexible schedule that you do? He does for now. He's got his, his, uh, girlfriend's pregnant, his partner's pregnant. So well, we'll, I'll bring, (laughs) I'll bring Chris on after, uh, after that, uh, after that baby comes out. I don't know Chris though. Um, I only know him. Sweet guy. He would do it. He is. He seems, he seems really good. I really, I really enjoy guys. I really like, um, a uh, a podcast that has that kind of focus onto it. Um, I'm wondering if you're gonna uh, like. Is there a, uh, a a dad guys or do dads just kind of fall into like? Because I haven't listened to Lawn Guys yet. That's my next one. That's probably as close as it gets right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> like uh, there were so many people, and that episode. I mean, it's funny because you you schedule these. I schedule the episodes before I prep them. So I've always found. That if my back's up against the wall, I do, I get work done. And like before, before it was always like, okay, I got to have like five or six stories to do on Wednesday and then the Colin show. And then I have to have something to do for the bonus show on this show. Like, it's like, okay, I had to have like so much content. It Like it takes so much stuff to put an episode together. Because like you don't know what's gonna work. You read something and it doesn't really seem right. You know what I mean? It you is gotta, fun. You, you gotta kind of dig into it. Like I imagine with like, because I'm, uh, I am anti lawn, but I own a house. Um, but I hate mowing grass. Uh, so I am attempting to turn all of my yard into um all weeds they call all well, weeds. yeah justifiable justifiable weeds though. Like oh no, these aren't weeds. These are um. You know, native native pollinators you know that's all the- weeds isn't a uh, is a, is not a derogatory term in the lawn community anymore like okay, there's good. a lot of lawn people that are like no i do all weeds and like you know they curate the weeds sure it, well it's not like they're like just not touching their lawn like but it, like a lot of people do clover mm-hmm. which kind of grows fan- naturally clover's fantastic because it's a early I'm going to show my dadness here. It's an early spring um, pollinator for for bees because uh, clover pops very early and also it doesn't get very high, so you don't have to mow it as often. Yeah, um, but it's not native though, so like you have to you have to come come across that like because that's what that's what I am. I'm, I'm I want to do native stuff. I want to have all the bees and butterflies and shit in my yard. And then when the city comes by and says you have to cut all that down, I can put one of those like you know native prairie restoration signs that you see on the side of the highway. Put that up in my uh, my yard and say, no, look, I'm I'm a huge fucking hippie. I got uh, a big um, little free library and I've got a bunch of purple cone flowers. Don't fuck with me. Well, I I so the way guys works is I do it in runs, six episode runs, six episodes over three weeks, and um at the end of the run every time I. I go on to a big list of guys that I've made and I pick five and I let my patrons pick one and I don't look into anything at all. So then two weeks after you finish a run, I have to figure I, my back goes up against the wall, figuring out like, Oh, how do I, how do I find menswear guys or, and Reddit is like a pretty good play. Reddit works for it. But I, I oftentimes I like to find a forum uh, cause I that's think where the real weirdos are. <laughs> yeah. I, if you can find a for, there's not a lot of forums left and, no. and reviews and comment sections tend to be great. And that was something that was happening quite a bit on, on street fight in that, like I would get, I would go to get a news story for the show and then find myself in the comment section of the news story and then find myself clicking on specific users and following them across websites and stuff like that to see what and build like a a profile of what the person is in my mind Mm -hmm. (laughs) because i just fast i graduated i went to school for sociology so i think it's just this was this was a perfect kind of thing for for me 
Well, and as I would, I would talk about guys all all day, but um, I do, I do want to talk about uh, fatherhood as well. Uh, but that that kind of sociology idea of being fascinated with uh, with other people. Um, one thing that I know is my daughter does Irish dance, so I'm around very specific people uh, who are into Irish dance. But also, my my wife is friends. Like she grew up in kind of like the uh, the music community here in St. Louis. So we're around a lot of, uh, a lot of those people as well. Um, kind of, what are the, what are the people like as your daughter was going through teen years, you know, I assume that you had to like interact with other parents. Um, is that something that you find you, that you struggled with? Or was that kind of a fun thing? Just like, here's all these people who, because I, I sit in this box constantly. This is my, this is my recording pod shack that I built. I am here constantly all the time. I do not meet other people unless I am meeting them uh, through my my child stuff. So I was just wondering, like you know, you kind of also are not necessary. You're you're not a you're not a you're a very online person. You're you're like me. You're not like the other normal people out there who just have like regular jobs and do regular things and have regular people problems. You know, we all we we kind of are on a, on a different wavelength. So I I wonder, like, how do you kind of deal with that? I have the shortcut of somebody asks me what I do for a living. I say podcaster and they're like, Oh, either they think I'm a loser or they think it's interesting. So like, uh, that it, it is like it, I have that, like a lot of her, she tells me a lot of the parents that, you know, of her friends think, Oh, wow, that's really cool. He does that and shit like that. So like I have that, but in the teen years I was dealing with other parents until she was like, 14 or 15 and then like my whole thing with her was like don't don't fucking go stay the night somewhere and get in trouble so i have to go to somebody's parents house and pretend to be mad at you and yell at you and stuff like that like it was all very much like uh i just i didn't want to deal with other people's parents and i didn't i never had to i mean she my kid i mean grew up with almost no rules in the house and ended up like being I I, unbelievable. Like I dreamed of having no rules when I was growing up. I just thought it would be the coolest thing in the world. She didn't do anything. She didn't take advantage of any of it. You know, she went to like one or two. She, I know, like sometime last year, she went to a party and got a little drunk and maybe a little high and rolled around in dog shit and then came home and sat on the couch and my wife fucking lost her mind <laughs> because of the dog shit i imagine like because the, of the dog shit because yeah. me and my me and my wife were friends as teenagers and we drank and partied and did did drugs and just i don't know man i came out fairly normal i'm not like gonna yell at a teenager for kind of doing what i did as it like it was it's It's very weird to like have a teen and know what you were like. And I was not a good kid. You know what I mean? Like I was kind of a a delinquent (laughs) and it was like, well, my daughter is like, she's like a, a, almost a 4.0 in school um, and all that stuff. And it's just like, I'm not going to yell at her first. Like she's, she has earned an amount of freedom that I maybe didn't. A little pop off vodka at a party somewhere, you know? Yeah. Well, and it is like I I think that had I been raised the same way I raised my daughter, I might have I don't know what I'd be doing now, but I think I might have been financially stable a lot earlier. That cause like the thing that people do with kids a lot of times is they they like decide what they want their kid to be and what they want them to do and what is important for their kid. And then that's their kid does that. And it builds like resentment and like, it just, it seems easier to me to have a light touch because then I'm not chasing like my parents. Okay. I would sneak out of the house. My parents would catch me and then they ground me and then they had to sit around the house making sure I don't do anything because right. I'm grounded They're punishing themselves as well during the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And yeah. it always felt like even when she was a kid, it always felt like the more productive way to deal with her, uh, to deal with her when she did something I didn't like. And basically, you know, the rules were, I, I mean, we just treat each other like humans in the house. Sure. It was a real sort of like, 
you know, don't say I hate you and shit like that. And so basically, if she would get in trouble, uh, she would not be allowed to do anything until she sat down and talked to me or her mom. It wasn't like she was in trouble. It was just like, you need to understand that what you've done or what you've said has made me feel bad. And if you go around in life making fee- people feel bad, then that's bad for you. They, that's going to turn out like you'll you'll be antisocial and all this stuff. So it was always like, there was always this thing in me that was like, I just want her to know what she did wrong. I don't want to be screaming at her all the time. I don't want to be hovering over her. Because that, I mean, what is that? What am I going to do with my life then? And she's a good kid. Like until she like did until she went and like did a school shooting or robbed somebody or something like that. I, yeah, you you're know. doing you're doing all right. <laughs> yeah. I I kind of have the uh the the same with with our daughter because uh, she used to be able to like one thing. My wife and I were just like, look, we'll we have no problem cursing in front of the kid. Absolutely no qualms about it because we don't believe in bad words. We only believe in, you know, bad, bad meaning behind words. Right. So when she was like two and three and she was learning how to to speak, she might like trip and fall over and like fall in her butt and just under her under her breath, just say, fuck. And I was very impressed that she was using advanced swear words, you know, correctly like that. But now that she's eight, she's at a uh, she's at an age where, uh, you know, she obviously has interactions and everything. And I've always told people like if she stubs her, if she stubbed her toe and said, ah, fucking shit, I would, that's fine. But if she looked at like me or her mother or one of her friends and said, you're, you are just really stupid. I would just, I would be like, what the fuck did you just say to me? Like, we do not talk to each other like that. You can sit here and you can throw all the, all the curse words that you want around as long as they are not directed at a person. Cause that's like you said, this is what, you know, if you say that, that makes me feel bad and that's going to make other people feel bad. And, and unfortunately, um, our, our child, well, a little fortunate, a little unfortunate. She's a real cop. Um, and we haven't, we haven't managed to, you know, get the, uh, the cop love out of her because, and the thing is she's homeschooled. Like, so there's not anywhere that she gets this other than like the media she consumes, which is mostly like, you know, kids shows and books and stuff. She reads constantly. Uh, so we're, we're kind of, we're kind of dealing with that, but she is very much a, a rule follower, which is, uh, which is helpful, but also at the same time, it's like, you can go off and like do other stuff, but I'm sure, she I'm sure puberty is going to change all of that. Yeah. My daughter was a rule follower too. Like cr- fucking crazy. I told the story when she was a kid, she was like, uh, Hey, what's my bedtime? And I was like, I don't fucking care when you go to bed. <laughs> and she was like, I'll go to bed at 10. And I was like, okay i <laughs> guess i don't care dude and like uh uh you know but she would she made her own bedtime she she you know she was always very careful it was i think there's something about like being honest and sort of talking to them like real people mm-hmm. there's something about being honest with them that that makes them not want their way like you know i told my daughter at the time when she was Bro, I'm going to talk to her about drugs and stuff like that. I was like, you got a whole fucking life to do that stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Don't do it now. Just yeah. wait your brain, until your brain's still forming. Like this is the yeah. bad. This is not the 14 is not the time to smoke weed. Like 19 yeah. is a perfectly fine time. to. Sm- I know the brain's still forming too, but like if, if the government feels you can join the army at the age of 17, I feel like you should be able to smoke weed at 19. You're probably doing less damage to yourself. And you've got time later on in life to do that i even told her like i'd rather if i was like you know if you're gonna go out and do stuff i hate the idea of you drinking around a bunch of fucking scumbag boys and stuff like that uh that if you are gonna do something you know uh weed is probably a little bit safer and i i think it would make me feel a little better but she didn't do either one when she was in high school, but it was just one of the, well, she drank a couple times, but, but it was like, she's, you know, they, she, she wasn't a drink a weird we, place. Yeah. yeah. We, I, I drank, I got drunk for the first time at the age of 15. I didn't become an alcoholic until I was well into my twenties though. So yeah, you, you've always got that, uh, that, that buffer there. Um, one other thing that I remember is, uh, you never made her get a job. Like when she became, when she became of age, I guess, 16 years old, I remember you saying like, look, if you ever need money, just ask me for money and I'll give you whatever money you need to go out and do 
whatever whatever you have to do. Um, and now, you know, she's working for you, which I assume is something that she wants to do. Um, but uh, were you a like, were you a uh, like work is bullshit? Don't don't worry about it until you have to or because uh, my parents were very much. No, you should go get a job. Uh, when I was in college, I did criminology and I took a a fucking child delinqu- juvenile delinquency course and they really pointed out that like what ends up happening is and you know i got a daughter that they go work somewhere and they work with a bunch of fucking 23 year old men and uh it just it doesn't seem like the best place for your kid to be and it just makes me think about the stuff i did when i you know i was working at mcdonald's and i was working at chuck e cheese and all that stuff when i was a teenager it was like I was fucking doing all kinds of crazy stuff because I I had these guys that would get me get me whatever I wanted and like that that you know we would go hang out at their houses and it's just like man a fucking 17 year old or 16 year old girl working with a bunch of 23 year olds is not probably great you yeah, know and, and not the jobs that you generally get at that age my first job was at a restaurant when I was 15 and i i loved it i have nothing but fond memories but i also know that like it was an incredibly fucked place for me to work um and it's funny i went to a jesuit high school and i had told all of our counselors were were jesuit priests and uh my mom told me that my counselor specifically was like you got to stop letting him work at that restaurant because it's in it's in this area in st louis known as the loop and back then it was the, uh, it still is a very popular place, but back then it was uh, a lot more gritty and grungy and, and, you know, uh, a lot easier to buy a bag of weed down there than, it, than it is today. And, uh, my, both my parents were just like, he's fine. He's got a job. He pays for his own stuff and his, his, my, my grades were never phenomenal, but I wasn't failing anything. So they, they were just like, it's, it's fine. He'll, he'll be okay. Um, but definitely I'm with you because like the entire kitchen staff there, like I worked with a lot of young, attractive people. I was the youngest one, um, at like 15, 16 years old, but it was a, it was a nice restaurant, not nice, but it was a restaurant where young people like in their early twenties work. So there was a lot of, that inter, you know, inner office fucking. There was a lot of uh, a, a lot of drugs being going back and forth. My sister worked there, and I think that's the only reason why my parents were kind of cool with it, because they knew that my sister was mean enough that nobody was going to to fuck with me. Like one of the, I went to one of the kitchen staff and asked if I could buy weed, and he was like, "Hold on, I got to go ask your sister first if it's cool, because she'll fucking kill me if I if I don't do that." She did end up getting a job at 17. She worked at a coffee shop that was right across the street from my apartment from where we lived. And it was mostly women, you know, it was like mostly like, you know, 20 year old women and 16 year old girl. I don't I I think like two guys worked there the whole time. And uh, she made a lot of friends and she knows how to make espresso drinks and shit like that. So she did learn something valuable. And I was a little less because it was like she wants money and she doesn't want it from me all the time, which I get. It's kind of one of those things where it's like uh, I have to ask for it. And if she she wants to have cash. So I hired her because one, I don't want to be on Facebook anymore. Like I just, I, I, 100%. <laughs> I got off Facebook in 2018 and then I, uh, um, I got off Facebook in 2018 and then about a month and a half ago because of guys, I wanted to get into some Facebook groups and stuff like that and see stuff. I logged in and it was like it was 2018 mm-hmm. on my Facebook and I just closed it back out and deactivated the account because I just couldn't sit around and recurate the, the feed and shit like that. And it just uh, so I was like, hey. You know, if you want to fuck your Facebook algorithm up and look up stuff for me, I can send you a list once a month and then pay you five hundred dollars a month. And she was into it, so yeah, just she did it. Peru- peruse these fucking weirdos and bring me back the the weirdest ones. Exactly, exactly. And it, it, it she was very nervous at first. Like, I don't know how to curate this stuff. I don't know what I'm looking for. And I was like, give me as much as you want. It doesn't make or break the show if I don't get anything out of it. And you could push me in a direction that I wouldn't have gone into 
because you share something with me and it has something in it that's like, oh, I didn't even think of that. And then I go look for that. So it's like, you don't even have to worry about if your stuff makes it on the show. It is helpful no matter what. Like it helps me figure out what I'm going to do. And she's like, oh, she wants, you know, she's a, she likes writing and stuff like that. So I think like this kind of thing is like, writing now is curating content basically it's not it i mean and you know obviously there's a lot of creative writing and stuff and she doesn't know what she wants to do she's undecided at college and uh i want to encourage her to i mean look i don't have a lot of money i mean i'm doing okay now obviously uh yeah you've you've got the lego collection to prove it yeah i don't split my money with really anybody 50 50 anymore and like all that stuff but uh yeah, I I I, uh, I I don't split my money anymore, so I make enough. But like, uh, she doesn't want to take money from me, and uh, I don't mind giving her money. And, and uh, well, you were talking about her wanting to be a creative writer, right? Do, and I oh, that's sorry, Francis. No, it's fine. I do the exact so same forgot. thing. Yeah. So been... anyway, I wanted her to take her sh- chance at writing, and I now make money, but I didn't when she was growing up. And I said I can give you one thing. All I can give you is connections to places you can write for, people that will hire you to write, and people that will help you figure things out if you want to do something in like writing or podcasting or streaming or something like that. Like I have that. Those are the connections I have. And uh, that's all, that's what I have to offer her other than money. So I've always kind of, she likes writing. I've always kind of hoped she took advantage of like the connections that I, I could get for her. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I kind of have that, that same thing because my, my daughter has been wanting to do her own podcast now. Uh, and we recorded, we recorded like a little pilot episode and um, it was nice. She wants to talk about comic books. Because that's what that's what she's really into. She loves to read comic books now. Uh, but it's, you know, where where do we curate something like that? Where do we put it out? Um, you know, we'll probably put it if I want to keep doing it with her because I do want to encourage her like to like, hey, yeah, pick up the mantle of your your father's, you know, uh, tiny little empire that I have here of, of podcast. And you can be a part of this if you want. And. She she kind of wants to do it, but also like she's she's still eight though. Like you know she's still trying to really figure stuff out. So like I'm I'm with you. I don't push anything. I'm just like she mentioned. She's like I would like to do a podcast because she was very impressed when uh, she found my show on Spotify. She's like my father is just so famous. He's on Spotify. Um, it's it's really great that I can still um, impress her in that that kind oh, of way. Yeah, my daughter. Uh kind of kept it a secret because she didn't want her friends to hear the kind of <laughs> stuff we were talking about. But now she's in college and she's like, I told people to do it. And I, I told people about you and I love it because they, they think it, they'll listen to guys and they'll think it's so cool that, and it's funny and that it's like a real thing. Because that's the thing. When you tell somebody you're a podcaster or a streamer, they're like, oh, this guy doesn't do anything. I guess <laughs> like there's no way he's making a living, but right. like, you know, you look, do that. What's your other job? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't and and like uh so yeah, she's she uh she tells her friends in college now and then they listen to the show and they they like it because you know, it's a pretty universal show. It's just goofing yeah. on guys. We we all we all know various guys. Um what what kind of guy are you? Like I know Me, I'm several. Because and that, it's and that's normal. good. You should be you should be several guys in one. Yeah, it's normal to be a lot of guys. I'm probably a Lego I'm sure. definitely a Lego guy that like, I mean, I got Legos on the floor that I don't even know what to do with <laughs> behind me. Uh, where did I, you pick, where did you pick that up? I got it as a gift one uh, day and just in for Christmas one year and I put it together and I really liked it. And then I just started buying them all the time. <laughs> just kept getting, just kept getting. Yeah. I, every time I see the, uh, the DeLorean, um, advertised, I, I think of you because that you're the, f- I found out about the DeLorean Lego set. Uh, I think you said something about it on one show. Yeah. I, I could see right it back there. <laughs> very, very jealous. Yes. Um, cause my, my daughter is, she does like doing Lego, but, um, she has ADHD. So like when you kind of have to sit her down and be like, look, we're going to do Lego now and she'll be really into it. But like as soon as it's out of out of mind, she doesn't she doesn't 
think about it anymore. Um, yeah, but- it's also about like I, I think with at least I did this with my daughter. It was like there was a period where like I was like, man, it would be really neat if my daughter like liked the same music I like. You know what I mean? And it didn't happen. I mean, it did happen in the end. Like that's one of the interesting things is that like. I don't know how it happened, but she got into the Pixies and she's really into the Velvet Underground and, and the kids like today stuff are like really that. into that stuff now. I saw I saw a 14 year old girl wearing an Avenged Sevenfold t shirt the other day. <laughs> like I, I was just a- absolutely astounding that and it was like a Avenged Sevenfold twenty twenty three tour date kind of thing. So it's like I took it, her to see some concerts. And stuff growing up, too. So we Mm -hmm. took her to see when I think she was eight or nine. We took her to see Neutral Milk Hotel. I think we took her to see uh, Old Crow Medicine Show when she was very young and a few other shows. We would just take her to little concerts every now and then. It didn't have like these huge mosh pits. And then when she was 16, I think we took her to Austin City Limits, which is like a big festival in Austin because she wanted to see Tame Impala and a couple other bands like i i don't remember it was like tame impala lil uzi vert lizzo was there and a few other things and so she was like super excited about that so we took her to that too um so i think that kind of stoked what she was into and then like i i have a thing in me that i think she has and it's like and it, i don't know if i don't succeed at this so people don't go around saying <laughs> you know But like the most important thing in the world to me for my whole life was being cool. And like uh, that she's kind of in one of the same spots where it's like she likes all the right stuff and shit like that. But yes, she's trying to get a job now. She wants another job. She wants to work two jobs because money i guess i mean well you know now if she's got a little uh, uh background in making espressos starbucks is from what i've heard starbucks is a pretty good place to work like they've got uh, benefits she, and stuff she <laughs> she applied at a campus coffee shop that's owned by ohio state and they hired her and she worked one day and then had her friends call and quit for her <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, "God damn it, kid! You gotta quit for yourself." <laughs> yeah, you. you it, at, at least you have to ghost them on your own. You can't like I've I've ghosted a job before. Uh, I ghosted a job at Office Max years ago um, when I was twenty one or twenty two or something. Just like I've decided, I'm just not going to show up anymore. But I at least I at least called my manager and said I was sick, and then just never showed up again. Yeah. I was the same way. I I never I ghosted almost. I I mean I got fired from almost every job I ever had. But even the ones I ghosted were just like this place sucks, man. I did it to a um, what was it like a place where they were like gluing car doors, gluing the upholstery to car doors, mm-hmm. and uh, I worked for two days. And then one day, and just in the middle of the day, I just left. I was like, I don't <laughs> I don't need this shit. This is horrible. Yeah. Uh. What I, I guess you you spend a lot of time working as a uh, as a cable guy. Uh, any getting getting your daughter into the uh, into the bucket truck and uh, having her go up and do some repairs. She thought it was cool to ride in my truck. I wasn't supposed to have her in it, but sometimes I would go and pick her up from school to ride in the uh, ride in the old cable van, and she always looks at that. She thinks of that as a cool memory. I'm like, it's a van. It's yeah, but it was anyway. a van with dad. That's what that's what matters. Well, I quit when she was like four or five. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't much remember her dad that worked a real job. Like she's basically remembers college student and podcaster is what she remembers of me growing up. She doesn't, she has like slight, cause I think I quit in 2009. She was born in 2004. So yeah, she was five years old. And I uh, became a stay at home dad and stuff like that for that period of time. And it was really good. That was like the best thing I think I did uh, was I don't know how good of a dad I was before I did that. But after I did it, I felt like I did a really good job. I'm I'm a big I'm a big fan of the homeschooling uh, and everything, because, you know, as as you said, like having no rules for, for a kid and seeing how how they kind of grow up. Um, but your kids still went to school. There are rules. There are times you have to wake up and times you have to be there and you have certain ways that you have to act and everything. But like my daughter, she rolls out of bed. Like I, I wake up, I'm the morning dad. I'm the guy, my alarm goes off at six. I get up, I take care of the pets. 
I go run or I go to the, the gym. And then she rolls out of bed around 7.15, 7.30. Uh, I get a little breakfast ready for her. And then I my pod shack is in my backyard. So I just say, okay, you've got your food. You've got your book. You're perfectly fine. Mom's in the bed. Mom's still asleep. Mom doesn't get out of bed till like 8.30 or 9 because she works from home too. And she has she's a travel agent. So she gets to have a very flexible schedule. So we she does most of the homeschooling. And, uh, and yeah, that whole like, when I when I walk the dog at six in the morning and I see kids out there waiting for the bus, I just feel so sad for all of them because like you're at, you had somebody had to wake you up at five five fifteen in the morning and yeah, get suck. food into you and push you out the door to go to a place you probably do not want to go to like and it's going to be a good hour and a half until you're there. You got to sit on this fucking bus and drive around the city until you get to this place you don't want to be. Um, and here in our house. My child does not put on pants most of the time, um, which apparently is a problem with homeschool kids. They don't they don't put on pants very often because why why would you? Yeah, I sent her to she she well you know we had COVID in her high school like so uh, she thinks she got back out of that in her junior year and that was tough. I mean like that stuff was very tough for her and what ended up happening was you know she got pretty depressed during the COVID stuff because she wasn't at school. She wasn't doing anything. She wasn't going to her friend's house and stuff like that. So when things lightened up and she didn't have to wear masks to school and all that stuff and everything was kind of back to the normal way, she really thrived and made a bunch of fucking friends and was like uh, uh, going out and doing stuff. And like, I just saw the change in her and I always feel so bad that like I, that that time got taken away and she kind of had to learn to socialize. And now you're hearing about in college where it's like, these kids don't know what they're doing. Uh, it's hard. Like she says it's hard, but honestly, I've told her, I was like, you know, I went to college and I did Columbus state, which is a community college. I thought it was the hardest thing I ever fucking did. Uh, and then after I graduated from Columbus state with a associate's degree, I did Ohio state. And when I got there, I was fucking terrified. Like, I was like, this is just going to, I'm not made for this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And she's not smart enough for it or not, just can't, can't hack it in, in this. I had the same, I had the same things going to college. I didn't go to college till I was like 20, 26 or no, 24 or 25. And yeah, it was, it's hard to make that, that first step, but I had, it's hard. Like, that's the thing they don't know. Right. Is like, so they'll go to, they'll do high school. They'll go to high school. And they'll be like, oh, this shit's kind of easy. This is, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's how my daughter always acted when it came to high school. Like, oh, this is, you know, this isn't, I, I'm able to do my work. I don't have to put a bunch of time aside and stuff like that. And I think that, like, being in college, you're like, oh, my God. And I just keep fucking telling her. I was like, they tell you all your work at the beginning of the semester. Make a list. But, you know, she's got to figure out her method. You know what I mean? But like, I just remember when I got to Ohio State, I was so fucking freaked out. Like everything seemed so much harder. And uh, I ended up getting through that first semester and things are normal now. I'll tell you what the good thing is when they get to this age. You get to like go on vacations by yourself with (laughs) your wife. That is sick. You just leave her ass at home. Hey, we're fucking going to california we went to california for two weeks earlier in the year we're going to alaska next month so yeah i um we have to hire somebody to take care of the uh the dog and the cats and i am very much anything i know i'm very much looking forward to just being like okay we're leaving you're you're gonna stay here although she does we we've been traveling with her since she was like you know three months old because my wife and i love traveling We, we had her on an airplane at three months um and and that's what has made her. She's a fantastic traveler. So I feel like I don't feel like we'd be able to go anywhere. And she would be like, no, I don't want to go to that place. She's always going to want to tag along. Like I, That's why you got to do it when they're in college, because they yeah. can't go. <laughs> I, yeah, I have. And, and that's another problem. Like, it's because we do homeschooling, um, we can travel at any time. We love traveling during the school year because shit is so inexpensive. Like you don't the summer. Things are hot. Like we go to Florida. It's, it's hot in, in the summer. It's full of people. It's gross because it's just like all swamp down there. 
But if you go in like November or December, it's not too bad. Like it's it's a little bit mild. And and uh, especially if you go in like January, like when we're in our deep freeze here in St. Louis and then I can fly down to Florida or something and just hang out for a little bit, get uh, warm up and then and then fly back home. So it is it's it's a uh, added bonus to the whole uh, homeschooling thing. But uh, I can do pro- write offs on trips that I work on. So like I I love to go to Chicago, New York or L.A. because I can work and then write it off. You know what I mean? Because my wife is a travel agent, we write off um, so much, like all travel. Uh, we save all the receipts and all of the uh, hotel accommodations. We have we have at, honestly like created this great like um, mix where I have uh, military discounts, um, which the war is over, so uh, those are kind of drying up in a few places. But now that she is a travel agent, like when you're a travel agent and you do a certain amount of uh, of work. A uh, certain amount of dollar work, you get perks. Like she gets to, uh, we get to stay at like uh, I think Hyatt's for real cheap um, because right. she's a travel agent. Those are good. Yeah. So like we we stayed at a at a Hyatt in Chicago for like eighty dollars, like downtown Chicago for like eighty dollars a night or something, um, because she can be like, look, I I book Hyatts, I book Hyatt all the time, and and she gets this credit for like any Hyatt, like it has to be, I think it's like one, you, you can only, if you stay at this Hyatt, you can't stay there at that rate for another year, but like Hyatts are everywhere. So it doesn't matter. Uh, and, and so when we travel, we've managed to figure out a way to make it as cheap as humanly possible. While also like once tax season comes around, because I have a business, she has a business, we have to hire a tax person because we have complicated taxes. I'm sure you do too. Um, you know, but we come in and just like, here's all the receipts. Here's all the spreadsheets. Tell us what we owe. And, uh, and usually we're, we're, we're pretty good at the end of the year. Yeah. My, uh, I have a tax guy. He's, he is, he was a fan of the old show and he's a fan of the new show and he does my taxes for me and he's very kind, but yeah, I, uh, I think the traveling thing was it's, I think for me, it was like, I'm sharing a room with my daughter we can't really go do anything without our daughter like she has to be there for everything when she was young and uh so we would go on vacations with her it was fun it was like good time family vacations but it is also very fun for just you and your wife to go and and like that becomes something that doesn't get thought about a lot in the years where you're in the parenting like you're you're doing the parenting thing you do not think about the amount of time you don't even remember what it was like to have some time with your with your partner when you're in the middle of it and that's what for me is like it feels like me and my wife are are back to where we were before she was born obviously less uh less scummy and we have more money but uh we get to make decisions that you know, we get to make decisions that benefit just us that we don't have to think about her. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean I've been chasing the Aurora Borealis with my wife for two years now. You want to go see uh, the lights? Yeah, she does. I don't give a fuck. I'll probably just look at my phone. But we're yeah, we're going to Fairbanks in November for our biggest chance to see them. Nice. And, uh, you know, we couldn't have afforded another plane ticket probably mm-hmm. out there and like uh you know she wouldn't want to go she doesn't really want to go to alaska and so she would complain and it's just like well you got school so fuck it you know what i mean <laughs> we went to the desert last year in la for a couple of weeks and it was a lot of fun and you know it's just uh uh it, it's just uh, i have a whole new thing now it's just a whole new thing where again it's me and my wife focusing on ourselves now which is cool yeah um, I'm lo- I, I'm glad that that has come back for you. I I know that with some couples, like the divide is too much, and they don't manage to get it back together. But my my wife and I, we've always like Saturday nights is our night. It's our night to be to you know put the kid to sleep. We watch some TV. We spend time together. Like because during the week, like I'm I'm working on stuff. She's working on stuff. I can't you know she has to work on things because she can't do it during the day because you know the kid is just being rowdy or whatever and is, and you know she's not getting that like ten minutes that she needs to send an email. So, but Saturdays is 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 our is our night for that. So for us, it's like very much like uh, 
you know, we hang around together at night now. We go and do stuff. We go to the movies a lot and like go walking around town. We we moved downtown closer. I mean, we always have lived downtown, but we lived in kind of a suburb that was like a mile away. Now we live right right in the short north area which is like a uh one of the more desirable areas in town you know when you do a podcast that you're not paying six people to work on yeah uh <laughs> you, i spent a little time in, that. i spent a little time in columbus the uh the the, the bad side of town because that's where the army bases are yeah like, yeah oh uh yeah, oh, dcsc or whatever yeah. it is up there on, yeah. on on whitehall and broad but yeah i i I think even there's just something about like me and my wife watch Columbo a lot and we just kind of hang around and we decide what we're going to have for dinner together. And I don't know. I, I didn't think it would be the, I didn't, when she first left for college, it was really hard for me. I, I was really, really sad that she was leaving, but now she comes around a decent amount and uh, me and Katie get to, do whatever we want. Again, going on a vacation that she would, Gwen would bitch about the whole time. I mean, there's just no fucking way she wouldn't complain in Alaska because it's going to be 10 fucking degrees and stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, or, there's a good chance you're going to complain in Alaska. You don't want two of you. Your, your wife doesn't want to deal with two of you complaining. So I tell my wife, I'm like, well, you'd be up there. You'll go look at the Northern Lights and I'll look at my phone and we'll just have a really good time. We'll have a... <laughs> Great vacation. <laughs> well, Brian, uh, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, I do, uh, because it's a dad chat, we're going to have uh, a question from, uh, from my, my, my fans, uh, a dad question. So uh, this one is, hey, dad, what's the most basic but essential tool that you should have in your home? So what, you, don't, you don't seem like a home repair person, but what do you have in your house that's you know, a tool that you use? I got a hammer. You know what the best tool I have? And this probably isn't going to be something that people are interested in or anything like that. Well, first of all, pipe wrench, because mm -hmm. it can just do everything. But uh, <laughs> the, the, the tool that I bought that I like is the, the jack, the floor jack for the car. So you without you. So you don't have to use the weird because I don't know how many times I had the car fall on me with that other thing where it's like you get a floor jack and you can just get it up there and it's done i think that's my that's the best thing i bought i think i got it for like 80 bucks it wasn't like a, a million dollars or anything and i don't know i don't even have to change my tire that much but when i do i have that hammer is a good thing to have around the house too and i've always joked around about this uh when i was a cable guy i always lost all my tools and you know the company gives them to you so they weren't my fucking tools and uh, there was a period of time where I would carry a Phillips screwdriver and a fucking butter knife from my house for a flathead. <laughs> so one of those screwdrivers, maybe, where you can switch the top. I have I have a couple of those. Yes, they're very they're very uh, useful. Where you can oh I need a Phillips I need a flathead yeah because I have I just did a home repair like two days ago I was like kind of fucking sitting and doing my Legos and my wife was pounding on something for like ten minutes I was like what in the fuck is she doing and uh she came back in the room she's done pounding so i didn't even ask her and then i walked into my kitchen and the uh, like little thing in the door frame had fallen off and uh it just kept falling off and i got mm. so fucking mad i just pounded like 15 nails into it and that was my <laughs> home repair <laughs> that's uh that 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 is some of the home repair that i've done as well is just you know slam enough nails into it so it doesn't move anymore renting is i am a lifetime renter people have criticized this about me uh but i just don't want to have to fix things i don't want to be responsible for stuff so i just can call the landlord and they can bitch about it but they still have to fix it yeah i we've owned for over over a decade at this point and i don't think i could go back to living in somebody else's house like i like i like to be able to just be like i don't like something in this house i'm going to change it like when we bought our current house the first thing we did was hire a contractor to come in and knock out a couple walls like because it's ours now we can we can do that well, Brian, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on to Dad Chat. It's been a while since you and I chatted. Like, uh, I, I haven't been, I haven't been on since, uh, uh, since the street fight days when I do uh, call into the call in show. So I, 
love that you came on. I love the show that you're doing. You should be uh, listening to to guys. Do you have anything, any other shows that you do? I know you used to have like a, a POD cast. I and did, a few other things. did a POD cast still. And just uh, guys is a podcast about guys. You search guys and Brian, and that's what's going to come up. And uh, it's on everywhere. And my Patreon is patreon.com slash murderxbrian, along with my Twitch is twitch.tv slash murderxbrian. So if you're ever interested on a Sunday night, to sit down and watch me and Chris uh, watch a couple take you through swingers clubs, like a tour of a swingers <laughs> club. I have got the stream for you. You're Sundays really not, at eight. You're really not beating the uh, the sex guy allegations here. Well, this we goof on it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I won't ever beat it. They, they, my listeners are jackals. Uh, a lot of people don't know <laughs> what it's like to do. Like people are like, oh, doing a podcast. Uh it must be cool to have fans. No, they're they're fucking evil. <laughs> My fans are the most evil people in the world. They they make fun of me all the time. So yeah, but they give you money. So you know you, you have to you keep you have to keep you know the the clown has to keep going out there and dancing for the uh, for the the hogs. I guess I always tell that to my dad. Like he'll be talking to me, and I was like, they they just they're they're brutal. They fucking you know the go off kings do a thing called Brian mode. And I took a picture of where I do my Legos and watch TV and the TV's kind of further away in the other room. So now they took that picture and they put whatever they're watching in the little screen of the picture from my TV. That's like 25 feet away. And they call it Brian mode. Like now they're making fun of my TV. They call me a sex guy. It's just the whole internet. If you're going to pay me to do it, that's fine. It's just you, the people that listen to me are, are evil. Actually, I have a lot of evil listeners. Well, Brian, I know that uh, that you love your wife, and even if you did go to hedonism, um, you would just, go in there. You just have sex with your wife. I, well, I, 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 that's he, what I keep telling people is like uh, we had Ike Barinholtz on. He was like, "Oh, you're going to go to hedonism?" I'm like, "No, these fucking <laughs> people like want these fucking people would pay for me to go if I said I'd go tomorrow. Like they would fucking a hundred percent pay for it and more." If I said I was going to go tomorrow, but I ain't going fucking tomorrow. I'm never going to hedonism too. It's gross. Yeah. The, the only, the closest to hedonism that I think I'd, I'd manage is a uh, gathering of the juggalos. And even that would be, Oh, I went there. I've been to that. It's fine. I have, I've never, I've never been, but I know it's always in the Midwest. So I don't really have an excuse because I don't think any of the coast could, could deal with uh, a bunch of people from Michigan. If you like drugs, man, that's a good <laughs> place to be. I'm 40, man. I just like to, I just like to smoke weed and that's it. just want to, smoke weed and not be bothered usually. Well, Brian, thank you so much. Everybody, thank you for listening and we'll talk to you next week. Sorry.